So, Wernit, I want to start with you. Um, in your position, the Football Association, basically, you're the heading, you came here first, yes, and start this amazing operation, uh, turning uh, the Pushkash Academy to our, actually, our stadium, with flags, with fans. Um, they spoke Hebrew all over the place. So tell us a little bit about this operation that is not ended yet. Yes, we have another game this Saturday, so. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, um, I'm very excited to be in a synagogue and speak about football, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I think it's a combination that I wouldn't guess or imagine in my life, but uh, as for the 7th of October, we feel that everything is, uh, is changed. Um, of course, um, dealing with the operational side of crisis, um, especially in a major event, is uh, very complicated. But in football, and especially in international football, it's even worse. So uh, we woke up at 6.30 in the morning on Saturday 7 of October. Half of the state had an alarm, including Tel Aviv, of course. I myself um, was sure that it's a, a technical mistake, I must say, because it was a wonderful weekend. Um, and then at 7.30, we had already a, a WhatsApp crisis call because we needed to understand uh, if we are going to operate our matches, our youth department matches, so all the local football, uh, if it's playable, if it's safe. Um, so we needed to stop everything. And we start from this, that, not knowing exactly what is going on. Um, and then the news went on and on. On 10.30, I had my first call with Yossi Benayoun, that his uh, family was captured uh, in Berry, in Kibbutz. Um, so while dealing with these personal issues, we decided to close football. Uh, we were heading to international matches uh, the week following, and we needed to discuss with the uh, UFA to postpone the matches. 24 hours after, we got uh, a restriction of traveling, so we couldn't also um, travel to any other state. Um, and that was the leading point that we started to think of uh, where we are going to play our next matches. Um, I've been here in Hungary 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. um, and from then, I think that I feel that all the Hungarian family actually are supporting the Israeli Football Association because to operate these kind of matches, uh, it is super difficult and complicated. We had an amazing cooperation with the association. Um, when a national team, and especially a national team like us, uh, we come with a lot of requirements. It could be security, it could be kosher food, for example. We bring our, uh, our food and chef and, and other uh, equipment. And of course, we need to uh, play by the rules of the UEFA regulations. So all this com complicated organization, um, it's unbelievable that we will help, you know, that we, we were hosting a home match yesterday. Um, and especially, I think the big win was the, the, the fans, to be honest. Because it was, for us, it was very clear that no way we are going to have fans in the stands. And I think one of the most warming things that uh, pushed us to pick Hungary, it's, uh, it's this, the reason 
that we could have uh, spectators, that we could have our half families, um, because this is the strongest message that football can deliver this in this moment. So, heading to Saturday. <laughs> Ishvan, we do it in Hebrew, Hungarian, English. You speak fluent Hebrew. Uh. You are one of the best ambassadors we have. We have great ambassador, but on the football pitch, you still speak Hebrew, huh? Yeah, I speak Ani uh, <laughs> It was funny because uh, I went to Israel. I didn't hear anything about Israel. I went to the country. And my wife was crying <laughs> that uh, we're going to go there. I it was 1994. 1994. So we didn't know much about the Israel football. So, so we just saw the news. Uh, the same was, news uh, all the time, huh? Yeah, it's the same news. So we went to travel agency. We asked them, uh, if Israel is dangerous, so they say, no, no, you can travel with us to Israel, but uh, only one thing, don't go more than 10 meters from the group. So <laughs> then my wife was shocked. So we arrived to, to Israel and uh, I signed to Better Jerusalem. Uh, I, I couldn't hear my name in Maccabi Tel Aviv because Avram Grant decided uh, not to sign me. So not, <laughs> not everybody knows this story, but uh, for the first time, I went for a trial to, to Maccabi Tel Aviv. I was, I think, in my best shape in my life. And uh, suddenly, Avram Grant uh, decided that he signed another player. This is a scoop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end, uh, the end uh, I'd end up in uh, Better Jerusalem. So they pick up uh, us in the, in the airport. So we just thought that we're going to get a bulletproof uh, west. And uh, with the tanks, we're going to travel to Jerusalem. But uh, it was shocking for us because immediately they took us, uh, the coach, Amatia was the coach uh, then, and uh, he had uh, kind of bar mitzvah or something like uh, this, and they took us uh, to the event. So we thought we are in a movie in, uh, in the United States. It was fancy uh, clothes on the, on the women and, uh, and uh, the dancing, and it was amazing. So. We just saw immediately a different story about, uh, about Israel. And uh, yes, I can say that uh, about the Hebrew. So I, four years I was there, my English was so-so, so I prefer uh, deepen my English language. But then uh, once in a TV interview, uh, uh, Yoram Marbel, uh, the famous uh, sport uh, reporter, said that, come on, Stefan. I felt shame, so I started to, to learn Hebrew. Uh, I was shocked because it's, it's, uh, I learned pretty fast. We learned in Hungary Russian, so many people say that it's difficult because they don't know the, to yeah. say different, to, to speak different to the, to the girl and to the boy. But for us, it wasn't something new. But I can tell you that uh, I was the first Hungarian player uh, in Israel. Uh, after me, a lot of Hungarian players came. Uh, I can count something like uh, we stopped uh, around 30, mm -hmm. something, uh, the last uh, 30 years. So all of us speak some Hebrew. And uh, they changed my name here because it was Ishtavan Pishont. And yes. I can tell you, Ishtavan Pishont couldn't come. Because, Why? Uh, Who is his boss because, right now? Because I'm a sporting director of okay. Zalaegerszeg. And uh, this week, we changed the coach. And we put uh, Gabor Martin, uh, became our head coach. We heard his name earlier. And uh, he's uh, Ozer Meamen. Uh, so you speak the, Hebrew, the basically, coach. in your team. He yes, and, he, and Pishont is the Ozer Meamen. Uh, and I told them yesterday that it's, it's very good for us, guys. We can speak, nobody understands. We have a <laughs> secret language. So it's uh, what I wanted to tell that it uh, doesn't matter if it's Istvan Shaloy or Gabor Marton or uh, Istvan Pishont or, 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 or Halmai. You could invite any Hungarian players who played in Israel and would say the same. Maybe they don't speak Hebrew that well than me, but uh, we got so much love and, uh, and we enjoyed the life over there and we loved the, the, the country. Many players played different places, Italy, France, Belgium, everyone is speaking about uh, Israel. So 
we had such a good feeling and we have a lot of friends in every every cities Ashdod, Ashkelon, uh, Tel Aviv, uh, mm -hmm. Haifa, uh, everywhere. So it's uh, I, we spoke about the situation what happened in uh, October 7 and uh, your date started with the, with the news you had to make a decision my date started our team performed very bad in that game we played in 12 o'clock in Hungary and we won so I was so happy I sit with the president uh, into the car and we started to speak about uh, the game that we were very happy and started to open my Facebook and uh, all the news came to my face and uh, even in the car everyone was shocked that they asked what happened someone died yes our friends and uh, we started to follow and uh, since then we speak about uh, a lot what happened and uh, what can we help and uh, many people speak about anti-semitism in, in Europe but uh, I tell to my friend is here over that I don't agree because uh, I think many people are afraid to speak out it's, it doesn't mean that they don't feel for Israel and uh, don't, don't support because they, they are maybe not loud like the Muslim community in the world but you can believe me that I speak with many people in Hungary because I became an expert of uh, Hungary in uh, uh, Israel and, uh, and, and, and many of them, most of the 99% is, 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 is with Israel and, uh, and they feel what happened and they support uh, the, the, the action, what is going on. Uh, and uh, I think it's a kind of media war that uh, maybe you don't feel the same, but uh, I think most of the people with Israel and, and they exactly know what is uh, the difficulties. And, and you can see in, in Hungary that uh, we are very welcomed. I was very happy to be in the, on the game and uh, congratulations for the organization. I felt at home because uh, in Hungary and also I, I, for me it's very special when I hear uh, Hatikva because uh, before uh, every game in uh, Betar Jerusalem, I can hear it, I sing it. Uh, I, I don't say I know every word, but Eretz uh, Sion Yerushalayim, I do it. So, so it's, it was amazing. I, I, I hope that uh, Israel can win, but we are very welcome because I think uh, our culture and, uh, and uh, tradition with the, with, the, with the Jewish people, with the, with the religion and with the Christian, we are the same family, and uh, I think uh, Hungary uh, stand by Israel. And uh, as a football player and all the sports guy who played it over there, and all our family stand by Israel very strongly. Thank you very much, Rishpan. Thank you. Very important words. <laughs> so before I introduce you, can we have on the screen the stuff this amazing young guy? is doing 24 with Israeli kids that lost their home. Very sad situation here in Israel, but let's try and make them happy. Who do we want to get? I want Mbappe. Mbappe? Yes. So, yeah, try open this pack. Opa, 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 la, ve. Okay, Trent. Trent. Yes. Trent. 7th of October, the day the Hamas did uh, what they did. What did you hear? And you feel scared? Yes, yes. Really? I was up at 6 a.m. and I heard the next Let's see where we're gonna get. We're gonna open our 50k pack. Opa. Oh, Kostic. 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 Ah oh, man, guys, which team you support outside of Israel? Man United. Manchester United. Yes. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Really, Real Madrid. Do you hate Palestine? Do you hate Palestinian people? I don't. Hate I hate them, Hamas. I hate, I hate Hamas. Hamas. So you don't hate Palestinian people? You just hate Hamas. You hate terror. Yeah. We are good. You know, we are very good. Yeah. So earlier, Ishvan talked about the media and the war of the media, and you do, you're doing an amazing job. You are taking football to YouTube, to Instagram, to TikTok, and try to explain the world through the eyes of football what exactly is going on right now in Israel. 
First of all, thank you. Thanks for everybody. And you know, football is like one of the only elements in the world that like really united us. Uh, especially for me, this is what this is all I do since I was 15. Today I'm 23. <laughs> I have half million followers on uh, on social media, uh, especially for the Israeli side. Um, and I think this is like the one of the only only thing that really unites uh, in these uh, hard times. Um, I am from Ashdod, okay? <laughs> I am from Ashdod. Uh, Ashdod is the, I think it's the fourth city in Israel that has been uh, bombed, uh, bombed uh, within the list of the cities in Israel. So I remember even was uh, one time it was a big, uh, like the two days after the 7th of October was alarm in Israel. It was like, uh, I think 7 a.m. We woke up and you know, usually when you, have, uh, when you have an alarm, you just go to your safe place in your house and you just wait. But then there's been like this, like this one boom <laughs> that strikes next to your house and you look, everybody in, your, in the safe house, in the, in the safe room, uh, I look, I'm looking at my mom, everybody looking at everybody, everybody like hearing this bo like big bomb. We get in outside to the balcony and we see like a like 50 meters from my garage like crazy crazy big smoke um, and it's, it's it's scary all right it's scary yeah. like uh, it's, it's not like it's not like a normal uh, normal thing for a 23 years old uh, guy or even uh, even 40 20 doesn't matter but 60 <laughs> yeah I'm sorry but um, I think that I have uh, a lot of power with my things that I do, with, to use my platforms to, uh, to explain the world what is happening. Because on social media, you guys, like you, you don't know the, the, the language of TikTok, of Instagram, and... Uh, and You're saying we are old. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, in a nice way. Okay. But, but okay, this is our time, our, our generation. But, but like, nevertheless, I mean, it's really hard to explain the TikTok media, the TikTok kids, the TikTok uh, generation, what is really happening in Israel because TikTok is fully about, uh, is like really about, fully about uh, fake news. And there is like a lot of football players like uh, Muhammad Salah and uh, uh, Hakimi and a lot of players who are spreading a lot of fake news and I need to show with my platforms the Israeli side and that's what I do like you've just seen like one video uh, I have tons of videos uh, that really like uh, that like managed to spread out of, outside of Israel um, and I hope I hope that like one day like my father told me when I was four, uh, four years old that when I will be 18, I will not, I will, I will not need to serve in the army. Uh, I hope that when I will say to my kids, it will really uh, come true, like that they will not need to be served, served in the Israeli army. Uh, that's what I hope so. And you, la, 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 one last thing I want to say, um, you don't, like what I feel, you know, in Israel, we have every, every year we have this uh, Holocaust Day, uh, Memorial Day. And you know, we always say that they're like, you know, uh, never forget, never forgive. Uh, uh, it will never happen again, no more. 7 of October, it was one of the first time you really felt it in your heart. Like, I'm a, I was born in 2000, okay? Uh, I'm sure you guys had already kids in 2000, some of you. My generation, I think we really felt it in our heart. Like I was crying. There was like days I was crying. What, what, like for what is happening? Because you just get in by two clicks on social media, you see in your own eyes what happened there. You, because all, all of the uh, social media and all the media that is now going on and everything is so uh, uh, visible and everybody, everything is so available to you by two clicks. So um, I hope that one day like, my kids will not need to serve in the army. And, but you know, there is things that are bigger than us. So I hope that it will be peace. 
and uh, I want to say thanks for the Israeli Football Association to uh, to bringing me here, uh, make this journey. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest days and biggest weeks of my life, of my professional career. Um, singing the Tikva and seeing all the Israeli fans outside of Israel coming to a home game in Hungary, it's a mix of proud and, uh, and sadness. Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope we will go, we will qualify to the Euro. This is what I hope, and I will hope I will do a, a good job from my side, and uh, our soldiers will come back home safely, and also the kidnaps. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's it. If you want, Cancello, to thank you very much. Todaraba.